So, so I mean, SDN and OpenFlow came out of work that we did at Stanford. Right? Yeah. So we were working on uh, a project called Ethan. Sure. From that, we created OpenFlow. Yeah. And we created Knox, and that kind of blew up into, into all of this stuff. So certainly, in the early days, we were very involved. There, there is no commercial implementation of Knox, just like I know there's a commercial implementation of Floodlight now, uh, which uh, other yeah, I mean, people have I mean, done. No, but... Knox was written in 2007. This yeah. was a long time ago. I mean, we were right. Like, at the time, there was no notion of a general SDN control. Sure. Right? I mean, this is, this is pre OpenFlow. Like, at the yeah. time, OpenFlow was even called something else. We, I mean, like, no, like, while we were developing Knox, we created OpenFlow. Yeah. And, uh, and this was as a way to talk to switches. Sure. Um, so it was never something that was commercialized. It was just a, um, a platform, an open source controller platform that we developed. And released. Yeah. So actually, so, so Guido came like two years, probably after. Okay. So, um, and listen, actually, Guido's a great guy. Yeah. He's, he, absolutely. He's been a friend of mine for a really long time. Yeah. Um, actually, like you know, we were uh, had the same advisor, but you know, he he went off to do a company. Yeah. Um, he wasn't involved in the original research. The original research was it was my thesis. Yeah. Was the thing. Um, my advisor was Nick McHugh, yeah. and we created Ethane. Um, then I wrote the first version of OpenFlow, and, yeah. uh, and then the, the first three developers of OpenFlow were all part of Stanford group. And we hadn't even joined, come back to Stanford yet. So all of the original work happened without him being at Stanford. Yeah. And then he came back later to work with Nick um, to help kind of grow it. But this is actually sure. after the fun. So, so, I mean, he's definitely had an important part, definitely, but it was after the creation of it. Sure. Is there a straight line between SDN, uh, Open vSwitch, and NYSERA NVP, or are they all three separate and distinct things That's a great thing. to, I actually, to explain? I actually don't really know what SDN means anymore, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, you know, the, the term was coined in 2009. Yeah. At the time, it meant something yeah. fairly specific. Um, but now it's just being used as a general term for networking. Like yeah. all networking is SDN, so that's very difficult to say. But as far as Open vSwitch, Open vSwitch is a it's a vSwitch that sits in the hypervisor, sure. and NVP is a product that uses Open vSwitch to create network virtualization. And so those two things, the Open vSwitch and NVP, are, are yeah. related. SDN, I just <laughs> I think it's an umbrella term for yeah. cool stuff in networking. Yeah, exactly. So Open vSwitch is one of the largest open source projects in the world, actually. I mean, it's enormous, right? We've got tons of contributors, um, you know, from you know, Cisco and Nokia Siemens and NTT. And I mean, I think there's something like 100 contributors in the last year. I mean, I mean, this, it's, a, it's a very large open source project. And, and it's in the Linux kernel, so ultimately the decision on on evolving it goes to the maintainers of the Linux kernel, not us. Sure. And many of our computer, uh, competitors, many of them do. And so it is a standalone open source project which we use. Yeah. Um, it's actually not true that we have proprietary extensions. Um, okay. So we use Open vSwitch, the open source version, like anybody else. Now that doesn't mean we don't have closed source code, but it's not an Open vSwitch. Sure. It's separate. Now, is SwitchLite something that would be competitive against uh, uh, NVP, or is it unrelated? I mean, I, I don't. I don't think I, I don't know yet. Is this, it's definitely yeah. not going to be competitive with MVP. So MVP is a, is a it's a network virtualization platform that yeah. uses vSwitches um, and hardware switches to build a network virtualization product. Um, many of them that we work with are closed source. Many of them are open source. We work with a number of them, and so I actually don't think it'll be competitive to MVP in any way. Yeah. Um, it could be viewed as a competitive to Open vSwitch, but Open vSwitch is so proliferate. Uh, so heavily proliferated right now, it's very difficult yeah. to see that to be an actual specific challenger. It'll probably go more towards kind of the hardware, sure. I guess. And, and where will you plug in, if at all, into uh, an open daylight kind of control framework? Yes, yeah, so we're, we're gold members of, uh, of open daylight. And I'm, I'm actually a big fan of, of yeah. open source uh, efforts in this kind of SDN space, whatever that means in, yeah. in general. And so, um, with respect to open daylight, you know, we've done a lot of work in open standards and open interfaces, you know, open vSwitch. Uh, the controller level down, above the controller level quantum, and now we're starting to work on federation between controllers. And so with Open Daylight, we're interested in these spaces. We're interested in making sure that it's compatible with Open vSwitch, it's yeah. compatible with quantum and OpenStack, and then working on federation. So these are the areas that we're, sure. we're looking to contribute. Now, I know the Cisco... And then how have things changed uh, now that you're part of the VMware organization? I know VMware is an organization itself. This changed dramatically in the last six months with change in CEO, change in CTO, etc. Yeah, I'm honestly I love it. Like I love um, working in a large company where you've got the resources and the channel and the insertion 
to take new technology and kind of bring them to fruition. And you know, it's, you know, startups is great. Like in a startup, you get to do like really aggressive stuff. You get to challenge assumptions. You get to take your own risks. But at some point, like pushing that technology into the market is is difficult. It's hand to hand combat. It's account to a, by accounts. Like working in a large organization, VMware is very good for innovative technologies. They've got great rapport with their customers, and so we work together to to bring new type of networking, virtual networking to customers. Sure. And so for me, it's been fantastic. It's like the realization of a dream. Like My goal in creating this era was to change networking. Yeah. That was the goal. And like it's very difficult to do that alone. And like now I work with I think, the best company in the world to make that happen. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very excited. So, so you know, we're in the networking business unit. Sure. It's a separate business unit. And we, we build a, a product called NSX, yeah. which is a network virtualization platform. It's a standalone network virtualization platform. So it supports multi-hypervisor yeah. and multiple cloud management stack. But of course, we're also tightly and natively integrated into the broader software-defined data center effort. So sure. I think maybe the best way is, you know, VMware as a company is focused on the software-defined data center effort, and sure. we're focused on the networking and security piece of that. Got it. Customers like to consume technologies in one of two ways. Uh, this is in my experience. Um, you know, I think the majority of customers like shrink wrap tightly integrated products, right? So. Um, uh, they say, say I create a virtual networking piece, but in order for them to consume that, they want this to be part of a, a, a tightly integrated product that, you know, it's got a very well-defined QA matrix, and sure. doesn't require a lot of operational overhead to do and so forth. And so, of course, VMware will deliver that. Totally integrated products. There's another set of customers, like those that will be at this conference, that are more interested in kind of loosely coupled um, sure. Uh, products where they can kind of add the differentiation and using best of breed technologies. Yeah. And so we're also very interested in selling into those. And in my experience and in my opinion, these are actually not competitive customer bases. I mean, these, these are actually two different needs and two different wants that we're trying to, 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 to fulfill. Now, is the ultimate goal to build Skynet, some kind of fully autonomous network that can replace <laughs> humanity? <laughs> but it's an awesome question, but no. The goal is actually no. fairly simple. The goal is okay. how do you build, um, how do you make networking have the property of software systems as far as innovation, as far as provisioning speed, as far as upgrade speed. I mean, you want networks to be as flexible and as agile as, as computers. It's not yeah. the case today, but that's where we're going. In general, with these types of technologies, first you virtualize, and then you start changing the laws of physics. So let's, let's talk about, I want to use an, a, a, an analogy of server virtualization. So, okay. so server virtualization, when it started, the pitch was very simple. So the pitch was, I'm going to consolidate your server. So instead of buying two servers, you only have to buy one server, and therefore you've got value. That was it. And from that very simple sales pitch, that very simple use case, we've created this enormous, you know, tens of billions of dollars industry that changed the paradigm of operating. Now you've got VMotion and Snapshot and Rewind, right? So the exact same thing is going to happen with network virtualization. So at the first, it's going to be, we're going to solve a simple use case. And that use case is, we're going to reduce the provisioning time of new applications to zero. So instead of having to configure all of this stuff by hand, it's going to go to zero. There's huge value there. It's very important to customers. That's why they're buying it. And once that's in place, you can start changing the operational model so you can do things you've never been able to do. Things, again, like snapshot and rewind. I can snapshot the configuration state for an entire network and rewind it in time. Dynamic service insertion. Things that you can't even think about today. So it'll follow the same type of path. And we're just starting down that journey now.